Hello everybody and welcome back to the channel. In this video, we are going to be ranking and counting down from worst to best 84 of my entire fragrance collection. I did this video uh, a few months ago actually, whenever I was kind of first of all starting out on the channel and I think I only had about 40 back then. So we've doubled in size and we've definitely improved the quality of the fragrance as well. I've moved more into the niche realm, which you'll see in some of this list. I will be honest, most of the ones on this list are a hamouage because they are my favorite fragrance house and I've got over 20 of them. So one quarter of this video is gonna feature Amwaj. But before we actually get into that, guys, I do just wanna say a huge thank you to everyone who has found the channel and decided to subscribe for the last year that I've been uploading videos. It really does mean a lot. I'm not too much one for numbers, but I mean, it's a special milestone on the channel and I thought I would give back to you guys by giving you uh, the next hour of my life talking about fragrances. On the topic of subscribers, if you guys haven't already, please don't forget to drop a like in this video. Please don't forget to subscribe as well because we are growing a great fragrance community. I have recently just launched a Facebook group as well. So there is a link down in the description below if you guys want to join that community too. And just quickly, if you guys are actually new to the channel and you've never watched one of my videos before and you're wondering how have I got 84 fragrances? Well, the way that I do it is I actually decant the fragrances and I get them down to a certain level and I make my money back and then I offset the cost that way. So technically, I don't spend any money out of my own pocket. If you guys want to learn how to do that as well, then I have got a link in the description below which teaches you step by step how to do it. It's only a £10 course. It's a mini course and it will just give you everything in detail that you need to know. So with that said, we are going to kick things off in the number 84 spot. I can't believe I've got 84 fragrances. And I just want to say that this isn't ranked from like the best quality. There's a few like clone fragrances in here that are a lot higher than really high quality niche fragrances. But the reason why I've included them a bit higher is because I wear them a bit more and I enjoy them a bit more. Not to say that they're the better fragrance, let's say. So I just wanted to clear that up as well, just before we actually move on to this. Okay, so we're gonna quick fire these 84 fragrances. I'm not gonna go into too much detail, but coming in at number 84 spot, my least favorite fragrance. Now I bought this thinking I was gonna absolutely love it. And I decided to get a clone rather than the actual thing because the clone was 20 pounds. I heard quite good things that it's quite close. And I wanted to sample the actual fragrance that this is cloning, but the price of a decant was like the same price as a 100 ml bottle. And the one that we're talking about is this one, Armaf Craze. So this is a clone of Perfumes to Mali Pegasus. It's got almond, it's got vanilla. And to me, when I smell it, it's okay. Like to me, it reminds me of like when you just step out of the shower or that like your girlfriend just comes out of the shower and it's like that fresh like body lotion smell that you get from this, like an almond butter sort of smell. And it's okay, but for me, it's very cloying, really sticks to your nose. And the first time I wore this, I oversprayed it loads and it just put me off. So that's the reason why it's in at the 84 spot. It's an okay fragrance, but for me, I don't really enjoy wearing it. It is unisex though, so I mean, a girl could definitely wear this. At the 83 spot, this one I think came last in my last collection ranked video, and it's this one here, Armani Diamonds. So this is a similar story. Sorry that this is so dirty. I literally never, ever wear this. I don't think I've worn this for like six years. I still have it in my collection because it's like a miniature. And let me just smell it real quick. Yeah, like it's not bad, but to me, similar story with Armaf Craze. I just oversprayed it and it's quite a cloying fragrance. These two, from what I've experienced, are quite cloying. They really like stay around and like linger around like, your nose and they can get quite irritating. And it's a nice smooth chocolatey cacao sort of smell. But for me, uh, it's not my thing. So coming in at the 83 spot is Armani Diamonds. Coming in at the number 82 spot, I picked this one up because I got this and another one, which surprisingly is actually quite a lot higher than this one from the house of Mugle. Uh, and it's one of the Mugle clones. I got two of them, uh, two 100 ml bottles for 18 pounds. So I thought, look, what's the worst that can happen? They're unisex. If I don't like it, I can just give it to my girlfriend or my mum or give it to someone as a gift. And the one that we are gonna talk about in the 82 spot is this one here. It's called Mugle Run Free. So. I actually quite like the Muga Cologne line. This one though, to, to me it's a bit too girly. Um, I don't really wanna spray it to be honest. It just reminds me of like fresh, like dryer sheets and it's okay. The performance on it isn't okay though, I'll be honest. And I think I've only worn this once and I just didn't really get along with wearing it. It just kind of went, 
like, oh, okay, this smells all right. And then it just nosedive because of performance. So 82 spot is Mugler Cologne, run free. At the 81 spot, this one has dropped loads since the last ranking video that I did. And I think the reason why is just because um, there's a, another clone that is a lot better than this one. And the one that we are talking about, it's a clone of Creed Silver Mountain Water. And it's this one here. It did really well for the first few years that I had it. And it was a really good Silver Mountain Water clone by Creed. It's this one here, Al Rahab Silver. And this is really cheap. So I think I got like, how much is it? 35 mil for about like eight pounds. And it's a great clone. It just doesn't last. And the dry down of this thing is quite bad. The first 30 minutes are just great. And then it just disappears straight away. So 81 spot is Al Rahab Silver. Coming in at the 80 spot, another clone. You are gonna find this quite a lot actually for the low ones down the list. They are clones. So uh, that could mean, you know, maybe stay away from clones if you're looking to grow a big fragrance collection because I hardly wear any of these. Uh, but coming in at the number 80 spot, I got this for 12 pounds. It was another cheapie. I thought, look, why not? I'll just get it. I think thinking about it, I actually got this because if I had spent an extra 12 pounds, I would have actually got free delivery. So yeah. I thought, look, I'll just get this. And it's this one here, Latafa Rams. So this is supposed to smell like Jean-Paul Gaultier Ultra Male, bubblegum, sweet, and it does a quite a good job. But I have had so much trouble with this bottle and it just leaks everywhere. Like, look at that, man. And you can see why it's 12 pounds, probably. The quality control on this thing isn't the best. The smell actually is okay. It's like a drier version if that makes any sense, of Ultra Male. It's not got like the really juicy pear in here. This is like if you stripped away all the natural materials and you just had the uh, synthetics, that's what you get. So yeah, 80 spot is the Taffa Rams. But you can't go wrong for 12 pounds. Coming in at the 79 spot, this one I actually bought as a mistake and it's not a bad fragrance, it's just not really my thing. Rose Incense, it's a clone of a Louis Vuitton fragrance, which is Nouveau Monde. And it's uh, this one actually is the clone of it by Jean Lowe, and it's just called Nouveau. So it's really strong. It's just not my thing. Like it's nice. If you like Rose and Oud, you would love this, I think. But uh, for me, that isn't really my thing. So 79 spot is Jean Lowe Nouveau. Great performance as well. This thing's a beast. 78 spot. This is a fragrance I haven't worn uh, in about eight years, probably. This was like the original Hype Beast before Sauvage. And it, this was actually my first designer cologne. I'll be honest, this was like whenever I first started speaking to girls uh, and wanted to get attention. And uh, can you guess what it is? Uh, it's this one here. <laughs> Pacaraban 1 million. And I still can't believe that people actually still wear this when there's so much other things available on the market. In the UK especially, this is known as like the chabby fragrance. So uh, I've stopped wearing it. I haven't worn it in a long time, but I will admit it is a nice smell. It is a nice, calm, relaxing, um, sweet smell. And it, it did do great for reactions, but I just haven't worn it in so long. And because of the reputation it's got in the UK, I don't think I'm ever gonna be able to wear this again or would wear it again, to be honest. Some of the flankers though are great. Coming in at the number 77 spot, I actually made a video about this saying I regret buying it and it got quite a lot of hate. And it was quite funny because I wasn't saying that it's a bad fragrance. I just don't enjoy it too much because there's a note in here that I'm not a biggest fan of. And the one that we're talking about uh, is from the house again of Lataffa, another clone. And it's a clone of Sauvage Elixir, Dior Sauvage Elixir. And it's this one here, if my camera will focus. Latafa Assad. And Latafa Assad is so strong. If you're just starting out on fragrances, yeah, this could be great for winter fragrance. But for me, because I've got so many other ones on the list that I prefer, I don't ever really reach for this thing. I have got a bottle of Sauvage Elixir. My friends currently, uh, we swap fragrances quite often and he's actually got Sauvage Elixir. I've not got it and I've got this instead, so. Yeah, it's okay, uh, but for me, it's just not my thing. The number 76 spot. This one actually surprised me with how low it started to go on the list. I didn't really wear it, and I think the reason why is because I actually picked up a uh, actual bottle, another clone we're gonna be talking about now. It's from the house of Armarf, and it's Armarf Milestone. So Milestone, I'm not sure if it's just my bottle, because I've had it for quite a few years, since uh, 2019, I think I've had it, since it released. But I think it might have turned on me slightly because the top note is very um, flowery. 
And I know that the Millicene Imperial DNA hasn't got that. The performance on this thing is okay. Uh, the dry down and the middle, the middle part of this fragrance is good. Um, but the top, I think the fragrance has turned on me, so I can't really uh, compare that. But it is, from what I remember, it was a very good Millicene Imperial clone. Uh, and it's got great performance, which is one big negative I can give for Millicene Imperial. So coming in at the 76 spot, uh, again, it's a great start of fragrance, but just for me, uh, I've kind of gone past that in my fragrance journey. So 76 spot is Milestone by Armav. Coming in at the 75 spot, this is a very weird one. I think I also included this in one of my fragrance regrets. And I've only worn this once, and uh, the reason why is because it smells like dirt and wee <laughs> uh, and, f and like soaking flowers. It's this one here, Amouage Figment Man. So Figment Man, like I said, it's earthy. It's so earthy. When you smell it, it's literally like you've just gone outside into your garden and you've just picked up a bunch of soil after it's been raining. That is exactly what this smells like. Um, and the reason why it's so low is just because I've only worn it once. I don't know where I could really wear this, to be honest. When am I gonna like want to go out and smell like earth and dirt? I wore it once and that one time was actually to football and it was whenever it was raining and it was muddy and it just seemed to suit it and I thought it'd be funny. So coming at the number 75 spot is Amouage Figment Man, and this is also discontinued too. Okay, 74 spot. This one's a great starter fragrance. If I could recommend any starter fragrance that you want to go out and get compliments if you're quite young, this is potentially going to be in like the top two, 100%. Uh, and it did great for me. I actually gifted this to my brother. He's, uh, I think he was 14 whenever he first actually uh, was gifted this from me. And it's Armaf Hunter Intense. So this is very synthetic, I'll be honest but it smells like a mix of Sauvage, EDT, and Invictus. So it's very uh, high complement factor worthy, uh, but it is just so synthetic that it's just not really my thing anymore. But it was good when I had it, uh, and it does really good for compliments, and because it's so synthetic, it's got amazing performance, surprisingly. Coming in at the 73 spot, this one is a very strange one. It smells like ash. It smells like a chrysanthemum flower, which is a <laughs> which is a funeral flower, and it's this one here. Cool bottle design, I'll be honest, but it's uh, is the reason why it's discontinued. Amouage Myths, very ashy, very strong. I can't really see myself wearing this because it's quite mature. I could see someone who's over fifty could absolutely rock this. Uh, just for me, it's it's a little bit too serious. For me, there's like a harshness in it. With some amouages actually have that. Uh, this one's no different. It's got like a harsh note in it that I'm just not the biggest fan of. It's very ashy. I think it's the ash that does it for me. I'm just not the biggest fan. Um, I can see why people love it though. But yeah, not really my thing. So 73 spot is Amouage Myths. 72 spot, I never reach for this. It's got cardamom. It's got a nice boozy note in here. Uh, it's been discontinued again, and I don't really reach for it just because the performance on this thing is terrible. I get about two hours of performance and about 30 minutes of rejection. And even though it smells great, like from the cap, and whenever like, you first spray it, it just disappears so quickly. And it's just, uh, come on, man. Like the performance should be better for like a fragrance of this DNA. And it's this one here, hyped up loads a few years ago. Carolina Herrera, CH Men Privé. And it does smell great, and the bottle, you can do that, which is quite cool. Uh, but the performance just sucks, I'll be honest. My batch, I, I don't know if it's because I've had it for a while, but it just doesn't perform. Coming in at the 71 spot, this is the other one that I was talking about uh, when I was talking about the Mugler Cologne, and it's this one here. So this one I prefer a little bit more. This is Fly Away. So I've worn this a few more times than Run Free, and this one has got two notes in it. It's got one note, which is uh, Cannabis, and the other note is grapefruit. And to me, this is a great like double noted fragrance. Not too many of them do that anymore, but this is just a great take on it. It just smells, uh, it does smell fresh and clean. You would think that with like the cannabis note, it's like, you know, it's, it stinks, but it's actually, I think more from like the plant of it. And it's very subtle. I'd say it's like 80% grapefruit and like 20% smoothed off from that cannabis note in here. So quite a strange one, but it does smell fresh and clean. And it's a great gum reach fragrance too. So, so coming in at the 71 spot, you've got Mugler Cologne, 
fly away. Coming in at the number 70 spot, this one has got the worst bottle design in the world. I've actually previously sold this fragrance, but I bought it back because I got a really good deal on it. And oh man, I hate this bottle design. I think that's the reason why it gets so much hate in the fragrance community is because of the bottle design. But the fragrance itself, I quite enjoy it. And it's a great fall and winter fragrance. It's this one here. And oh man, terrible bottle design. What were they thinking? It's Machino Toy Boy. Terrible name as well, actually. But the fragrance itself is very rosy. And I think there's incense in here or something, but it smells to me like a Parma Violet Sweet. And I love this thing for the winter time. Whenever it's freezing cold, this thing works great. So number 80 spot is Machino Toy Boy. Coming in at the 69 spot, this one I haven't worn in a very long time. It's a very party going fragrance. I wore it a lot back whenever I was like 18, 19 and starting to go out to like clubs and stuff like that. It got hyped up a lot as a club in fragrance. So I thought, look, if this is the club in fragrance, then fine, I'll go out and buy it. And it's this one here. I actually finished a bottle and sold it, but this is a miniature here. It's Versace Eros, mint, apple, and a bunch of other synthetic notes in here. It smells okay, but like, yeah, super synthetic. The flankers of this are a little bit better, I'll be honest. This is the EDT one, by the way. 78 spot, this one I bought because I thought it was a, uh, a clone or like an interpretation of Creed's Virgin Island Water, and it's not. It just leans in like this similar kind of ballpark. And it's this one here. It's an entirely different fragrance itself. And it's Tommy Bahama Set Sail St. Bart. Tequila, salt, lime, just fresh and tropical, a very cologne smell. This would be great for like a bathroom, uh, clean, uh, like a bathroom spray. Um, but if you live in a hot country, this is super cheap. It's just a no brainer if you live in a hot country. But for me, living in the UK, I hardly ever get to wear it. And whenever it is the occasional time in the UK where it's hot and sunny, I'm gonna choose something a little bit better than this. But the performance for Noda Cologne is great. Coming in at the 67 spot, this one is the final one of my Mugula Colognes. And this one's like the original one I think that they brought out. It's just original Thierry Mugulé Cologne. And it's in a um, tester bottle. And this was back when it was actually called Thierry Mugulé instead of just Mugulé. And it's good, but again, like the performance is just terrible. It just smells like a fresh bar of soap. I spray this if I just need something like fresh and clean quickly. And I'm only doing something for like 30 minutes where I see someone like if I go uh, uptown or something to deposit money or, you know, like something like that, you know, just something that I'm only going to be able to wear for like 30 minutes. This thing does great because it fades away super quick. It's also quite a good uh, job interview fragrance because it's not too offensive. You just smell fresh and clean. Coming in at the 66 spot, this one has done a nosedive just because I hardly ever wear it. It's now the kind of hype beast fragrance that everyone knows, everyone's worn or been gifted a bottle. I had this back in 2015, 2016, like literally like the month after it was released and no one knew about it. And it was like my secret weapon. I got so many compliments with this thing. And it was the second fragrance I bought after um, this one. It was about one million. And this one just did amazing for me, fresh and clean, uh, synthetic Ambroxan note with a bit of pepper. And it's the Eau de Toilette version of Dior Sauvage. I just never ever wear it just because of how much other people wear it. I did have another bottle, but I sold it. And yeah, it just smells like everyone else that you meet on the street. So 66 spot is Dior Sauvage. Great fragrance, but it's just kind of like the death of itself because of how good it was. So yeah, 66 spot is Dior Sauvage. 65 spot, this is Jean Lo Immortal. So I know I said before, and uh, I bought Nouveau. I actually bought this as a mistake because I thought it was this fragrance. So this, is just like a fresh and clean fragrance. It's like a slightly better version of Fly Away by Mugle. And the performance I think on this is terrible. Um, I, people like were hyping it up in the community. I have never had a reaction. I've never had someone say they can smell me whenever I spray this. I think maybe I just need to spray more of it and just go absolutely crazy with it. Uh, but it's discontinued, it's very hard to find. Uh, but yeah, it's okay. Like it's not the best, but it's a clone of Lament, Lament Site, I think it's called, by uh, Louis Vuitton. Uh, and it's just okay. It's not the best. It's not the worst. It's just a good dumb reach spray it and go fragrance. Okay, coming in at the 64 spot. I think I actually rated this in my ranking every single one of my Amouage fragrances 
as the worst fragrance. And I hated rating this as my worst Anwar fragrance because it's not even that bad. Like the other two, they're not bad either. Like maybe it's not bad. Like none of them are bad. It's just the actual scent profile. This one, unfortunately just came last in that video because I didn't know where else I could put it. And it reminds me a little bit of Tom Ford's Tobacco Vanille. It's this one here, Boundless. And it's a good fragrance. It's a great spicy, warm, wintry fragrance. It's uh, supposed to be like a take on golden wood, apparently is the marketing behind it. And it's okay. Just for me, it's like nothing groundbreaking, which isn't really what you want for Amois. You want something like crazy. It was just a bit of a disappointment whenever I first picked it up, I'll be honest. Uh, but it's great. I love the bottle design. Uh, so 64 spot is Amouage Boundless. 63 spot, this one is another clubbing in fragrance. It's slightly above Eros just because I prefer the DNA of this. It's got a really nice juicy pear note in it. And it's this one here, Jean Paul Gaultier Ultra Male. And this is the a lot better version than the Taffa Rams. Uh, but again, it's quite low down on the list. This at one point was actually, oh, it's good. I think whenever I was very new, this is actually my favorite fragrance DNA ever. But yeah, it's just gone down on the list just because I hardly really reach it now. I don't go out clubbing and partying and stuff. And whenever I do, I want to wear something maybe like a little bit more sophisticated because I'm I'm 24. I know I'm still young. Like 20s is when you go out and partying. But like I'm not, you know, I'm not I'm not young. I'm not like 18 anymore. This would be perfect for like a, you know, 18 to 22 year old who's not too serious. Um, but yeah, if I'm ever feeling not serious, I'll wear this. But yeah, it's got that pear note and like a burnt vanilla. It's great. Uh, for partying and clubbing. I just don't really do that too much anymore and I hardly wear it anymore. So yeah, that's why it's so low on the list. Coming in at the 62 spot, another clone by Mason Alhambra. I think it's a Lataffa clone and it's a clone of a popular Tom Ford fragrance and it's this one here, Bright Peach. So Bright Peach, I actually don't wear it too much, but I love how this thing smells, man. <sighs> Maybe I'll wear this for my scent of the day, but oh, it is so good. Uh, I just don't really reach for it too much. I'm surprised I've ranked this so low on the list, but in terms of practicality, you smell like a peach, you know? Like, people probably think that you've got, like, peach juice all over you. Uh, but it's a great fragrance, and it's a very good clone. I actually prefer the clone than the actual Tom Ford fragrance because, like the name suggests, it's a lot brighter. And it just reminds me of, like, the life cycle of a peach where, at the start, it's very fresh, it's very uh, fruity and juicy, and then when you get to the dry down, it, qu it turns quite earthy, so it's... Like imagine if you just put like a peach in your garden and you just let it like, uh, what's the word? Just, I don't know, dissolve. <laughs> That's not the right word, but yeah, you kind of know what I mean. So coming in at the 62 spot, I love this one, is Bright Peach by Mason Alhambra. Coming in at the 61 spot, this is the complete opposite. This is super practical. You can wear it any time of year. Um, a lot of people actually seem to wear this um, that I know of. It just reminds me of like, a manager's fragrance. And it's a bit annoying because I know that they wear the original one. This flanket is a little bit better and it's uh, my favorite version, I think, of uh, the line. And it's this one here. It's annoyingly only available in the UK, I think, the re-release. And it's Invictus Aqua. So in my opinion, a more kind of fresh take than the original Invictus, a little bit less bubblegum, a little bit more freshness in here, like a sea breeze. It's good, but again, I don't wear it too much just because it is uh, quite mainstream. And there's actually someone in my office that wears the original one. And I want to be known in the office for, you know, the fragrance guy. Uh, and I don't want to, you know, go out and spray this the same time as him. But it's great for casual and it's also great for like formal wear as well. So coming in that 61 spot is Paco Rabanne and Victor's Aqua. In the list off in the number 60 spot, this one is a clone of God of Fire. It's another Mason Alhambra Lataffa fragrance. I don't know why I've got so many from the house of Lataffa. Uh, but this one is like a very, very similar clone to God of Fire. And it's Skepta Malacite. And I wore this to Tenerife and I got really good reactions with this thing uh, amongst my friends, amongst like bartenders and stuff like that. And it just smells like mango fruit. It just smells a little bit like air freshener too. Uh, I went in my friend's car who actually has this fragrance. It's the reason why I bought it. I went in the car and I was like, bro, what, what car air freshener do you use? It smells amazing. He told me I don't have a car air freshener. It's probably this. <laughs> and he wasn't wrong. Uh, it does smell a little bit like car air freshener, but this thing like fills an entire room. Uh, it's great. It's very mango-y. Uh, perfect for the summer. Mainly for casual wear, though. 
60 spot is Skepta Malasite. 59 spot, this is the reason why Al Rahab Silver is so low, uh, because this is the better clone in my opinion. It lasts a lot longer, it's a lot closer to the actual real Silver Mountain water from the House of Armarth. It's Armarth Siage. So Armarth Siage, to me, annoyingly, I wish this was better. There's a very weird thing that happens in the middle of this fragrance that smells a little bit mushroomy on my skin. The open of it is great and the dry down is great, but there's like a really weird part in this fragrance in the middle on my skin. It just does that and I don't know why. And it really puts me off wearing it because I know, okay, two hour mark, here comes the mushroomy note that I try and avoid as much as I can. So coming in at the 59 spot, I just wish it worked a bit better on my skin, is Armaf Siage. Coming in at the 58 spot, this one and the 57 spot battled out hard for this spot. And the reason why I decided to put this one just behind it is because it's slightly less wearable, but from my experience, it's the more favored Amouage. And it's the only one I've got with a tester cap and it's Journeyman. So Journeyman is like a Sichuan pepper. It's very fiery. It's very serious and it's very strong from Amouage and it smells great but it's quite harsh. It's like, let's say you wake up in the morning and you just want like an easy going fragrance. I'm not gonna pick this up because it's so serious. Whereas at the 56 spot, they're quite similar. They both have like a pepper note in them. So journey is if I'm feeling like serious and stuff like that for the office. If I'm not, then I'll wear this. 56 spot is Amouage Onoman. And Honor Man is just like a fresher version of it. It's a little bit less serious, but it's in a similar ballpark. It's just a little bit more muted in terms of like the spiciness that's used. But it's my favorite black pepper note. And uh, I really like the bottle design on both of these, actually. Both are really cool bottle designs. I just need to get an actual cap for Journeyman. So if you have one and you live in the UK and you'd be open to selling me that, uh, let me know. Uh, please comment down below saying you've got one available because I'm on the search for it. Next up, guys, is a very fresh and clean, a little bit like On A Man, but in like a very designery way. It just smells like linen. It smells like a perfectly pressed white shirt. And it's this one here, known for being the soapy fragrance Prada Lom. So I can't really say too much about it. I think the more and more I wear it, the more I enjoy it. It's very strong, actually, for a fresh fragrance. So coming in at the 56 spot is... Lom by Prada. 55 spot, this one's another easy going fresh fragrance. And I just prefer the DNA of this a little bit more. It's a little bit more exciting to me, but they both do really good jobs. Prada Lom and this one from the House of Casmarati. It's Fiero. I think I've got a really old bottle of this. And Fiero just smells, it's so refreshing and calming. It's, it smells like fresh lemongrass and it's just so smooth. I really like wearing this one. If I like don't know what to wear, I just want to have like a nice calming day, I'll wear this. And I wear both of these in like a similar kind of environment when I don't really know what to wear. But if I want something nice and calm, I'll wear this. It's just, there's something about it that just calms you down, which is great. Coming at the 54 spot, this is from the House of Amouage again. It's this one here, Bracken Man. So Bracken Man is a little bit stuffy, I'll be honest. Like it's not the freshest, like there is like definitely like a brown stuffiness in it. But to me, it just smells like a forest floor. And it's also got a cola note. I feel like it's got a cola note in here. I pick it out. Some people say they can't, but I really like this one. It's like a fougere fragrance. So it's supposed to smell like an out of the barber, but with a twist. And Amouage do a great take of that. And it's just super unique. I don't wear it too much, uh, but I probably should wear it more. I can see someone a little bit older wearing this probably. Uh, it has been discontinued again, unfortunately. Amouage seem to do that a lot with their uh, with their Stranger fragrances, and this one's no different, but I really like this one. Coming in at the 53 spot, I'm not going to talk about this one too much because it's very similar to the 52 spot, and it's this one here, Chanel Alohom Sports Original. So this just smells like fresh water, basically. It's got like a powdery, tangerine note, and it's very similar to the 52 spot. These ones are literally the exact same fragrance, uh, this one here is Versace Pour Homme. And uh, this has just got a better performance than Chanel Luom Sport. And I thought, look, they're basically the exact same fragrance. So if I ever want to wear both these fragrances and I wear this first, even though the quality is very good, it doesn't perform the same as this. And this actually gets better reactions 
because people can actually smell it. That's why this one comes in at 53 and then this one comes in at 52. Coming in at the 51 spot, like we were talking about like fresh water, this reminds me of that. And I, there's something in this that I really like. It's Dolce & Gabbana light blue. Jeremy Fragrance summed this up. It just smells like fresh, salty gummy bears. And, and that sounds really weird to say, but it is just such a nice fragrance. It reminds me of a trip I took to London. And yeah, there's just something in this that I really enjoy. It is, it's the grapefruit note, by the way. When the grapefruit heats up, this becomes fresh and it's just got like a really gummy bear smell to it. I love it. It also reminds me of like um, shaving gel and stuff like that. So coming in at the 51 spot is Dolce & Gabbana Light Blue O Intense. Coming in at the 50 spot, this one is a flanker to La Malle and it's La Malle Parfum. And oh man, I thought I enjoyed, uh, where is it? Ultra Male by uh, by John Paul, I forgot the name of it then, but La Malle Parfum, man, this thing's good. It's so strong. This is probably one of the strongest fragrances on on my list, and there's just like a oh, sophistication to it. It's like, you, you can wear this out, like to like a night out, but it's just like a sophisticated version of this, and the performance is incredible for this. I have a friend who also has this. Actually, I have two friends who have this. And every time I see them and they wear it, I can smell them, which is always a good sign. So coming in at the number 50 spot is La Malle Parfum. So good. Coming in at the 49 spot, this is a really cheap fragrance. It's uh, actually the original version to Creed's original Santal, which is quite funny that they call it original Santal, but that's for a whole separate video. And it's this one here from the house of Mont Blanc and it's individual, one of the cheapest ones on this list. And you, you can't go wrong with it. You can't dislike this fragrance as long as you don't overspray it. It just smells like fresh raspberry and like a laundry detergent smell all in one. And it's very sophisticated. If you are looking for like your first office fragrance or your first kind of like serious fragrance, this is great. I can't recommend this to you enough. I really enjoy this. It's an almost all year round fragrance. I probably wouldn't wear this when it starts to heat up for the summer, but you won't go wrong in the fall, the winter and the spring with this fragrance. So coming in at the 49 spot, you've got Mont Blanc Individual. Okay, coming in at the number 48 spot, the complete opposite. This thing isn't sophisticated. Do not wear this thing into the office. This is a very strong fragrance. It stays on my clothes forever. I don't think it actually comes off. And it's this one here from Montal. Arabian's Tonka. I rated this as uh, one of the top seven niche winter fragrances. Very sweet, very sugary. Uh, there is the note of oud in here, but it's like kind of overtaken really by the sugary sweetness from this. Amazing reactions. My girlfriend really likes this one, surprisingly. She doesn't usually like these types of fragrances, but there's something about this one that she really likes. So if you're looking for a great winter fragrance, you can't go wrong with this. Coming in at the 47 spot, another strong winter fragrance. This one, I actually thought was not gonna get good reactions because of the smell whenever I first sprayed it and smelled it on my hand, but it was the complete opposite. This thing gets amazing reactions and it's also got amazing performance. Probably one of the top three highest performing fragrance in my collection. It's this one here from the House of Amouage. Interlude Black Iris. I can't hype this one up enough if you're into daring fragrances. Don't wear this if your favorite fragrance uh, has been stuff like Dior Sauvage and like Eros and stuff like that. I don't think you're gonna like this. Uh, it's very dark, it's very incense-y. This thing is also very flowery and very buttery as well. It's very sweet, but the performance on it, man, is just incredible. I love the smell of it. I just because of how strong it is, I don't really reach for it too much, but it is great nonetheless. Coming in at the 46 spot, this one is a clone of Perfumes to Mali Leighton. I really like this fragrance. I need to get Leighton when I can actually find a good uh, bottle price for it. In the meantime though, I mean, you can't go wrong with this clone. It's really good. It's very similar. Got great performance, the clone, by the way. It's this one here, Al Haramain Detour Noir. So this fragrance, I'm just gonna show you the sprayer of it. It's probably the best sprayer I actually own. Have a look at this. Pressurized sprayer, and it just smells like a kind of like fresh apple pie. It's got like a Vix note in here. Warm, but fresh at the same time. It's very unique, uh, but I love it. And I can't wait to wear this one more. 
a lot more in the winter time. Probably one of my favorite clones. Coming at the 45 spot, this is a fresh and clean fragrance. I only wear this in the heat, the high, high heat. I don't think uh, you can wear this in like the winter time. You could, but this thing shines a lot more in the hot weather. And whenever it's super hot outside, this is the only fragrance that I feel like I can wear. And it gives you a cooling down effect. It's this one here, Versace Eau Fresh. And just smells like fresh uh, wood. It smells like uh, when you're by a pool or like you're on like a, the yacht, like a, on the deck of a yacht and you've got like the wooden panels and they've just been like soaked and they're getting uh, dried off by the sun. That is to me what this smells like. Uh, really good one, man, for the summer. I absolutely love this. The performance could be a little bit better, I'll be honest, but what else can you expect from a fresh fragrance? Uh, this actually do great fresh fragrances and this is probably one of my favorites. Speaking of fresh fragrances, again from the House of Amouage, you've got Search. So Search, to me, is a very strange fresh fragrance. It's one of the strongest fragrances, again, in my list. Amouage just do crazy strong fragrances. This is probably the strongest uh, fresh fragrance I have. If you ever had the nose pens that you like uh, put up your nose to clear your sinuses, this thing, weirdly, one day actually decided to just go crazy with the lemon and lime note it's got and actually clear my sinuses, which was just so strange like it had a very freshness to it but with a twist it's also got like a smokiness so the way i describe this one is if you put lemon and lime on like a fresh frying pan and you put it over a fire that's what this thing smells like and i really like it but because of how strong it is it could probably get quite annoying which is why i don't wear it as much but really good one coming in at the 44 spot i think is Amour Search. Really nice bottle design too. Coming in at the 43 spot, I think this is one of the last clones on the list. It's probably one of the five last clones. And this one is uh, probably the most talked about clone ever. And it's a clone of Creed Aventus. I had to put it on the list. And this is the original Eau de Toilette version. I think this is quite an old bottle. <sighs> yeah, it's good though. Uh, it does smell quite similar to Aventus. Obviously, this has got the lemon note in here that Aventus doesn't really have. It's quite screechy for the first 15 minutes, but in the air, this thing leaves an amazing Aventus-like scent trail that gets great compliments. This is, I think, my second most complimented fragrance ever, and I need to wear it more. Uh, it just outperforms Creed Aventus in terms of like projection and longevity. But in terms of smell, this thing has nothing on Aventus. So coming in at the 44 spot is Club de Nuit Intense Man by Armoff. Coming in at the 42 spot, Jammy Rose and Lime, fresh but musky at the same time. Smells to me like Dove Hand Soap. And it's again from the House of Amouage, another amazing bottle design and amazing color. It's this one here, Lyric Man. So I don't reach for Lyric Man too much just because of the rose in here. But when I do, oh man, I can smell this thing on myself all day and then into the next day in the dry down. I really like this one, just for like the Western world, rose isn't really seen as a masculine fragrance. So sometimes I'll wear it and people have the reaction like, oh, it smells a little bit girly, but it does smell all right. But to me, I don't care about that. And I absolutely love this fragrance. So coming in at the 42 spot, I think, is Amouage Lyric Man. Coming in at the 41 spot, I actually wore this as my scent of the day yesterday, Aqua de Joe Profumo. It's been discontinued, so I'm wearing this a lot less. And you can't go wrong with this fragrance, man. It's just so professional. I absolutely love how this thing smells. It reminds me of my first like proper office job that I got. And I remember I had like just bought a new Italian car and I was matching it to like, you know, the Italian fragrance and I just felt like the boss. <laughs> uh, and I know obviously I wasn't, but <sighs> it just reminds me of that. And I really love it. There's a reason why this has so much hype in the community. Just a shame it's been discontinued. Next up, number 40 spot. This one is another clone, kind of. It's like a 50% clone of Angel Share by Killian. And it's another clone by Latafa. I promise you we're, we're running out of clones and we're moving on to the niche fragrances. This one is so good. It's so sweet. It's so almondy and like praline cake smell. It's this one here, by the way. Latafa Camera, the original version. I remember one of my friends sprayed this on my hand uh, last December. I was like, man, I have been out of the fragrance game for a while. And that's this fragrance actually is the reason why I actually started this channel and got back into fragrances because I had about like 30. I took a break of like four years and then my friend sprayed this on me 
and I was like, oh man, I'm hooked again. So this actually got me back into fragrances. So uh, this fragrance, thank you. <laughs> thank you so much. Uh, but it's a great fragrance and it gets great reactions and it lasts all day. Coming in at the 39 spot, this one is another discontinued Amouage and I'm so upset because I absolutely love the DNA of this thing. It gets a lot of hate, or it did get a lot of hate whenever it was uh, available. And uh, the reason why is because apparently it smells like curry and I don't really see that. Uh, it's this one here. Coolest bottle design though, like look at that. Amouage Fate Man. I absolutely love the bottle design of this thing. So Fate Man has got the main note of cumin in it, which is used a lot for like Indian spices and curries. And uh, I've never really had that reaction. I've only had good reactions when I wear, wear this thing, but it's so calming. It's so like brown smelling and I just love it. Whenever I'm wearing like a brown hoodie, I will, or something like this, like a fleece, I'll chuck this thing on because it's so calming, but so warm. Uh, I, I, ooh, when you dropped it, <laughs> won't be able to get another bottle if I did that. Uh, because it's discontinued. But yeah, coming in at the number 39 spot is Amouage Fate Man. Coming in at the 38 spot, this is one of my most complimented designer fragrances and one of my favorite designer fragrances too. It's got a very nice patchouli note. It's got a very nice inset note that give it a little bit of dirtiness while staying like shower gel fresh clean. It's this one here, Versace Dylan Blue. And I think I picked like this up a few years ago on sale. 100 mil for 30 pounds, so it's kind of cheap. I don't know what the price is now. But yeah, and Broxen in here as well, man. Uh, it's great and it gets amazing compliments and it lasts all day long and it's so safe. I've never had anyone say that, you know, they don't like this smell. I've only ever had good reactions. It's also one of my girlfriend's top five favorite fragrances. So yeah, coming in at the 40 eight spot, you've got Dylan Blue. Sorry, 38 spot, Dylan Blue. Coming in at the 37 spot, another discontinued Amouage. We're really going through the discontinued ones here. And it's a very fresh and clean Elemy note. It smells a little bit like a sticky kind of um, lemon or like a fresh, uh, and don't let this put you off, a fresh like urinal cake. And not like whenever it's been used, a fresh one from a pack. Or like, uh, let's say it smells like um, like a laundry tablet or something. That is what this thing smells like. Amouage, beloved man. And I'm just gonna smell it real quick. Yeah, man. It's good, it's classy, it's upscale. And don't let what I described put you off. It's the closest thing I can uh, I can say. But the Elemino in here is done amazing. So yeah, that is Amouage, beloved man. Coming in at the 36 spot. This one surprised me with how much I actually enjoy wearing it. Because I had just heard things like, oh, it's basic. Oh, it just smells like shower gel deodorant. It's just a fancy clone. And yeah, it is, but it's just great. It, like you smell this on yourself and like, wow, something smells good. And then you remember it's yourself. And it's this one here from House of Perfumes to Mali. It's Percival. So Percival smells like, well, a little bit like a more niche version, let's say, of Abercrombie and Fitch Fierce. It is just shower gel. It is just, you know, deodorant smell, blue, but it just gets the job done and it gets great compliments and it lasts all day long. And I really like wearing it. So I'm gonna back this thing up. This is a great start on niche fragrance and I will sing its praise because I really like it. It's boring, but it works, but it smells great. 45 spot, this one, how, I've just realized this thing actually beats perfumes to Marley Percival, not in terms of like projection and like the quality and stuff, but in terms of smell, I prefer wearing this thing. Uh, I love this thing as a clone, uh, so much so that I decided to pick up an actual bottle of the real thing. But the clone we're talking about is Trey Nui by Armoff. And this, apparently someone told me in the comments that this actually isn't a green Irish tweed clone. It's a clone of, um, like a Bond number no. nine fragrance and cool water. And yeah, maybe I actually can see that now thinking about it, but it's close to green Irish tweed slightly. And it's just so soft and like lemony. I really like this thing. Uh, and so much so I've actually got a backup bottle of it. This is a great starter fragrance. It's so like calm and refreshing and clean uh, and just so versatile. I wear this thing to the gym. So coming in at the 35 spot is Train Week. Coming in at the 34 spot, this one is from the house of Zerjov and it's Renaissance. So Renaissance has just got a fresh lime or like lemon smell, fresh citrus smell, let's say, 
with the note of, I think it's mint. Uh, there's mint in here or, or, or something like that that just keeps this thing fresh and clean all day long. But then it kind of transitions into like a greenness. Really good for the summer months. Uh, I did wear this quite a lot and it got good reactions. It does get uh, good performance too. So yeah, coming in at the 34 spot is Renaissance by Zerjoff. 33 spot, the complete opposite. This is a winter only fragrance. Uh, maybe, maybe you can get away with the autumn time. Uh, it's very cozy, it's very inviting, and it's by the House of Replica, and it's by the Fireplace. This to me, if I can compare it to any fragrance, if you ever smelled Stronger With You by Armani, this is like the kind of higher end version of it, let's say. And it's just so like chestnutty, warm, just like how it says, it just smells like being next to like a, a nice warm fireplace. Oh, this was my favorite fragrance for a very long time. And the uh, the juice has just darkened so much since I've had it, but it's such a great fragrance and I can't wait to wear it this winter time. Another great winter fragrance I can't wait to wear uh, at the number 32 spot is Latafa Camera Kawa. So this is a little bit like the original camera, but uh, Kawa has got a note of coffee and you can kind of see the difference in the juice color there. This has got the note of coffee and it just sweetens it up a little bit. And yeah, I just prefer the DNA of this one a little bit more. And this thing, oh my God, maybe because of the synthetics in here, but this thing has lasted on my skin for like three days straight whilst showering uh, once a day and actually like the second day trying to fully scrub it off, I couldn't. So this thing has got amazing performance on skin and on clothes. Okay, coming in at the 31 spot, this one, is the most popular from the House of Amouage. It's the most decanted one for sure because I've run out of all the juice on it almost. And it's this one here, Reflection Man. So Reflection Man smells so fresh and clean. A little bit like if you were to like spray your mirror and wipe it down and you just get the sheen. That is a little bit what this smells like. It smells to me like the purple robes that a king would wear. It's got a really nice jasmine note in here. It's white floral. And to me, it's like the kind of uh, niche version of, where was it? Of Prada Lom. So this thing is great for all settings, a perfect signature scent. I absolutely love it. And I want it to be my signature scent uh, if I don't wear a different fragrance every single day. So coming in at the 31 spot from the House of Anwage, you've got Reflection Man. Coming in at the number 30 spot, this one again from the House of Anwage. It's not very talked about, but to me, I prefer it a little bit more than Reflection Man, because with Reflection Man, it gets so much hype. And it's even though it is a good fragrance, it's more of a kind of starter uh, niche fragrance. But this one is in a similar ballpark, but it's so posh. And it's this one here. It's not talked about enough, I don't think. Dear Man, meaning day. And Dear Man has got the note of peony in it, so it's quite flowery, it's got a bit of vetiver in it. And this thing, whenever it warms up on your skin, just kind of sweetens up and it's just so, classy, so posh. And I've never had someone dislike this fragrance. The only thing I can criticize about it is it doesn't project because the the main note in here, the peony flower, it's a very light flower. My mum's a florist, so I would know all about flowers. And yeah, peony just doesn't uh, project. So literally put your nose in the flower to smell it. And this thing's no different really. It's very close to skin, but it lasts forever. So posh, 30 spot, dear man. Check this thing out. Okay, coming in at 29 spot. This one I've hardly really talked about. It's Tonka Cola by Mansera. So this just smells like cherry Coke and it has got a nice warmth to it. But every time I wear it, people say I just smell like cola and it's a very unique fragrance. Uh, but for the price, it's a great start on niche fragrance and I just really enjoy it. So coming in at the number 29 spot is Mansera Tonka Cola. Coming in at the number 28 spot. This one is a little bit similar to Dear Man where it's got the main note of like the florals in there, but it's also got a freshness in there too. And this one, again, it's another discontinued Amouage. I'm so annoyed that they've discontinued them, but this is probably the oldest Amouage fragrance that I own. And I am so surprised I ever even managed to get this uh, bottle in the first place. It came up in one of the Facebook groups and I was like, oh my God, that is an absolute gem. And it's uh, actually Silverman uh, Vintage. So this one is the ivory cap. So this has actually got uh, the non-magnetic cap. And this thing lasts on me all day. It's a really nice 
Uh, floral note, it smells a little bit like baby wipes, but in like a nice way. It's very old school, I'll be honest. But I just, I really like that. It's a little bit baby powder-ish. I've heard Goldman is compared to that. I unfortunately don't have Goldman. But this is the next best thing, Amouage Silverman. And I'm so happy I got this. And I don't know, there's something about this fragrance I really enjoy, and I really enjoy wearing it. So you might see this a little bit higher up on the list um, in future lists I do, because I've only had it recently, and I've been quite scared to wear it because of, of how rare this thing actually is. So coming in at the 28 spot is Amouage Silverman. Coming in at the 27 spot, again, we're sticking with the, the theme of kind of floral fragrances, uh, manly floral fragrances. This one is a great one. Again, it's discontinued. I just realized how many discontinued fragrances I actually have. Uh, I've talked about it so many times on the channel. Uh, it always does great in terms of compliments. Every time I wear it, I've had a compliment and that is not actually exaggeration. Uh, I've been counting it and it's true. Like it is every single time I wear it, someone mentions it to me or asks me what I'm wearing or say I smell nice. And it's this one here, hyped up loads years ago by Jeremy Fragrance. Bulgari's Aqua Amara. So this smells like a fresh tangerine uh, and like neroli and stuff like that. Just fresh, clean, salty sea breeze. Uh, it's like as if you've had like a tangerine and you've opened it up next to the sea, basically, is the best way I could describe this one. Perfect for summertime. So upset that they discontinued it and really good performance too. So coming in at the 27 spot, you've got Bulgari Aqua Amara. Coming in at the 26 spot, this one, whenever I first sprayed it on myself and I first tried it out, I wasn't the biggest fan, but after wearing it a few times, I've started to really enjoy it more and more, especially for the colder months. And it's this one here, a very hyped up niche fragrance, and it's Side Effect by Anishio. So this is fresh, but sweet. I think it might have a rum note in here. I'm not actually too sure what the notes of this actually are anymore. I, I keep forgetting, but to my nose, it just smells it's got freshness in here, like a lightness, whilst also being sweet, and it gets good reactions. I quite enjoy wearing it, and it's the the bottle design and the bottle colour are perfect. Every time I smell it, it just reminds me of the colour purple. Yeah, I think it might be a rum note in here, but yeah, super good. Coming in at the 26 spot is Anishio Side Effect. Coming in at the 25 spot, this one is again an Amouage fragrance. You're probably going to start to see a few more Amouage in this list, actually. We've gone through about uh, three quarters of them, but the rest of them on here are like my top 10 uh, Amouage fragrances. This one has to be on the list because it's so good. It's one of the best starter Amouage fragrances, I'd say. Really green, really minty. It smells very ivy. It's this one here. Amouage Beach Hut. Man, I wore this uh, out in Tenerife and I... <laughs> yeah, wow. It's strong. And yeah, I remember I sprayed this like three sprays, only three sprays. And we walked up the hotel room and before we get in the taxi, my friend is like, bro, whatever you're wearing is absolutely nuclear. Those were his, his exact words. And yeah, I can't disagree with him. This thing is super strong. It just smells like I green ivy, basically, with a bit of mint. And it's one of the strongest fragrances I own. It just stays around forever and ever and ever. This was, I think, one of my first four amouages. And this was my favorite one for quite a while. Uh, you can't go wrong with it and it gets great reactions too. Okay, coming in at the number 24 spot. This is a fragrance that I really enjoy wearing myself, personally, and the smell's okay, but I prefer it when it's on my clothes. So this is from the House of Creed. It's not actually talked about that much compared to the other ones, uh, and a few more that you'll see on this list, actually, from the House of Creed. It doesn't get the love I think that this thing deserves, and it's this one here. Creed's Himalaya. So this gets overshadowed by Silver Mountain Water uh, every single time. Silver Mountain Water, if I can describe it and compare it to this one, it's Silver Mountain Water is basically the more interesting version of this fragrance. It just smells like powdery, fresh gunpowder, but it, it's just so nice. Uh, so like refreshing to wear. It's so easy to wear as well, which is why I like wearing this one so much. Really cool bottle design. Whenever I went to the Creed Boutique, they told me that the way that this was fragrance was inspired was they would go up on the Alps and you've got the freshness from like the snow and the ice. And also whenever they blast away the, uh, to make a trail basically in, in, the, in the mountains that you get the gunpowder note. And this is supposed to smell like that. 
the gunpowder and also the ice blast as well. And obviously it's Creed marketing, but I can kind of actually see that. And yeah, man, I like it. So coming in at the 24 spot, is Creed's Himalaya. Coming in at the 23 spot, this one is actually quite similar. Same actual color design almost. So Creed Himalaya, like I said, is quite powdery while staying quite fresh. But this one at the 23 spot, I prefer it. It gets a lot better reactions and it's just a little bit more mainstream and a little bit fresher too. So the one that we're talking about is this thing here. Chanel Allure Home Sport O Extreme. So we've already talked about Chanel Allure Home Sport Original which is like fresh uh, tangerine water, basically. And then you've got this. And this thing is probably the most versatile fragrance that I own. It's probably the top five most complimented fragrance I've got too. And this just smells like tonka bean, mint, uh, that tangerine as well. It's like an a more interesting version of Himalaya. The smells are very different, I'll be honest, but they have got that powdery freshness that kind of remind me of one another. I just happen to put this one a little bit more. And it has got that really nice Chanel. So coming in at the 23 spot is Chanel Allure Home Sport O Extreme. And in my opinion, because this is often disputed in the fragrance community, I would say you can wear this all year round, even in the summertime. Coming in at the 22 spot, I remember this was in my top 10 in the last list that I did. So it just goes to show how many good fragrances I've actually uh, picked up and actually like more than this one. And I gotta give this one props, this was, uh, my signature scent for like six months straight. I really enjoyed wearing this thing. It's so professional and classy, but also so safe at the same time. It reminds me a little bit of like a bubble bath. And it's this one here from YSL and it's long. So this, like I said, it's so fresh and inoffensive. And it does just smell like a freshly ran bubble bath. And I really like that. My girlfriend really likes this one. And I actually wear this in my job where I was selling windows and doors and I would go around to customers' houses and I would always wear this one because I knew no one could get offended by it and it is also quite professional too. So for an office setting or just any kind of situation where you need a safe fragrance that isn't too loud, isn't too daring, just go with this. And I also just really like the smell of it too. Uh, the only thing I could critique about it is of course the performance. It just doesn't seem to perform, but it's still a great fragrance. And yeah, perfect signature scent for someone as well. Coming in at the number 21 spot, I'm actually uh, quite surprised this is so low down the list. This just goes to show how much other fragrances I've got that are, that are, well, I prefer than this one. I won't say better, but this one again is from the House of Amouage. It's this one here, Epic Man. So originally in my ranking video of ranking every Amouage, I think I rated this quite low. And that was because the bottle that I had at the time was very, very new. I don't even think I had like sprayed it more than five times. You can see now, and I have decanted this slightly, um, there's a bit of air in the bottle now. And getting air in this bottle, wow, this thing's strong, has just changed this fragrance so much for me. I really enjoy it now. Uh, before I couldn't smell it at all, whenever I first bought it. Now, and funny story actually, out of every single one of these fragrances, I've got them all lined up next to me. This fragrance, and I haven't, it hasn't leaked, it hasn't, I haven't spilled any of it at all. I could smell this fragrance over every other one. Out of my 84, this one was the one I could smell the most. And it's a very distinct smell. If I can describe it, it's, it's like a, like a spicy, woody fire smell. It's supposed to be a take on the Silk Road from, uh, I think it was ancient China to Europe and stuff like that, where they would carry all the spice and the spice trade basically. And the way I like to describe this fragrance is imagine you've got that cart of spices and you're going through like the desert or something in the night and the cart just explodes and it's on fire. And that's what this just smells like to me. Kind of like a um, burnt wood and also the spices too. Super good. I really like it and it gets quite good reaction surprisingly. It's a very manly scent. Coming in at the 21 spot, I, I'm surprised this isn't higher is Epic Man by Amouage. At the number 20 spot, this one is probably one of my favorite designer fragrances of all time. This thing was like the first thing I ever smelled and was like, wow, that is incredible. I need to pick up a bottle of this. I smelled it in the department store and oh man, it just made me realize how much there is uh, to learn about fragrances and all the different notes associated with it. The one that we're talking about is this one here. 
Dolce & Gabbana, the one eau de parfum. And yeah, still, every time I smell it, I'm like, yeah, this is a good scent. And you can't go wrong with it. It's There's nothing to really dislike about it. Perfect kind of date night fragrance or kind of like close encounters. Performance isn't the best. And surprisingly, I actually don't find that as a problem with this fragrance because that's kind of what you want. You want people to come into your scent bubble and stuff like that. You don't want it projecting too much. And whenever people can smell it, it is just a great fragrance. Super spicy, super warm, and there's like a little bit of freshness in here. I think there's like a ginger note that kind of freshens it up a little bit. But I really, really like this one. And the grapefruit note, I let it macerate and oxidate, whatever it's called. And the grapefruit note in this thing is just like the top note, the main note. And yeah, it's just great. So coming in at the 20 spot, Dolce & Gabbana 1 Eau de Parfum. Next up at the 19 spot, this one is actually quite similar in terms of like situations to um, Dolce & Gabbana 1 Eau de Parfum, but I just prefer the DNA of this a little bit more. It's a little bit more intriguing to me and there's a little bit more depth to this fragrance. Uh, again, the other critique I can give it is the performance. This one though, the performance is a little bit worse, but I prefer the scent. So I'm going to put it one higher than Dolce & Gabbana 1. And it's this one here, YSL's Lanwee Delon. And you can see I've worn quite a lot of this, mainly because you have to overspray it. Oh, man. But I really don't mind doing that. This is perfect for an autumn or fall night or winter night, whatever you call it. And it's just great. It's so classy. It's so sophisticated. Uh, if you spray this on clothes and it sticks around on your clothes, similar to with Percival, you can smell this on yourself throughout the day and you're like, oh my God, something smells amazing. It's, it's this. <laughs> Uh, or Percival, if you're on Percival. Uh, but this thing, again, like I said, when you smell it on your clothes, or like if you spray it on like sheets and stuff like that, it just smells amazing. So coming in at the 19 spot is YSL Lanwee de Lom. I know that I probably won't because I got so many fragrances, but if I ever do run out of that, I'm probably not going to rebuy it just because I'm in the performance by the time I, uh, I have finished that bottle and, and buy another one. With the reformulations, it's probably going to be like water uh, with the amount of times that YSL reformulate that thing. Coming in at the number 18 spot, I know with Dolce & Gabbana 1, we talked about that lovely grapefruit note in here. This one has got the same grapefruit note. It's basically, um, to my nose, the exact same grapefruit note as Dolce & Gabbana 1, but a much fresher take on it. And it's this one here from the House of Suspiro, and it's Vibrato. It's got a really weird quilted... Uh, material for the bottle. Never seen that done before, but it's just fresh powdery grapefruit. And I wore this again to Tenerife. I got great reactions with it. It's perfect for the summer office wear. Versatility wise, this thing is just unstoppable. It's probably one of the best on the list. Performance is great. It's kind of like, to me, like the kind of modern fresh fragrance sort of style. It smells a little bit like Bulgari's Tiger, if you've ever smelled that. And yeah, I get that people compare this to that and it's like a clone. Uh, but to me, I think it's a little bit different. It's got a little bit more powderiness to it. And the performance on this thing does just as well as Bulgari's Tiger. So coming in at the 18 spot is Suspiro Vibrato. And also this fragrance in the UK is actually quite hard to find. And the reason why I think is because people buy the bottle and they realize it's quite nice, so they keep it. I hardly ever see this being resold. And I think the reason, like I said, is just because people want to hold on to their bottles. So yeah, coming in at the number 18 spot is Suspiro Vibrato. Coming in at the 17 spot, this one is fairly new on my list and I've been waiting to get a bottle of this for a very long time because I've had samples of it, I've smelled it in the department stores, I've heard a lot of hype on it in the community and the reason why is because this is actually a flanker of probably the most popular fragrance or niche fragrance for that matter of all time and the one that we're talking about is this one here, Aventus Cologne. So this is really high up on the list for an, a new fragrance in my collection. And oh man, it is, it's great. It's like the original Aventus. If you were to add in this Versace Pour Homme, or if you were to add in like this Chanel Allure Homme Sport, it's like adding in this, and I don't have actual Aventus, so I use Club de Nuit. It's like if you added these two together, then you get Aventus Cologne. And Aventus Cologne, I mean like, you've got the freshness from uh, like this side of things, like the Versace Pour Homme, 
but you've also got like the muskiness and stuff that Aventus has and I think that is like the perfect combination to be honest. Kind of missed out with wearing this for the summertime. I got it in September, so whenever the weather was starting to turn. But funnily enough, my girlfriend really doesn't like uh, Club de Nuit or Aventus for that matter, but she actually really enjoys this one, which is quite strange. I think it's because of the freshness in here. But yeah, super good one, really versatile. I would say um, because of how much people have Aventus or they've got Club de Nuit Intense Man, maybe instead of purchasing a bottle of Aventus if you've never bought it before, maybe get this. I don't have Aventus, I've got Club de Nuit Intense Man, but I have got this and to be honest, I'm really happy that I've got this. Coming in at the 16th spot, this one I think was in the top 10 before it's moved slightly down. Not to say that this is a bad fragrance at all or I dislike it any less than I did before. I actually, I think, like it even more this time. And ugh, it's just so classy. It's got a really good performance and the lemon note in here is one of my favourite lemon notes of all time. And my favourite lemon fragrance, I would probably say, is this one here. Chanel Allure Home Sport Edition Blanche. So people compare this to like a lemon meringue pie or something like that. And I can kind of see that. It is just so fresh and classy. This, in my opinion, is like, if I were to wear uh, Chanel Allure Home Sport, if I've worn this like in the day or something, for example, and I've got like a, a fancy event to go to, I don't know, or like some kind of upscale event, I'm gonna be wearing this. Not talked about too much. Um, there was a lot of like talk in the community a few years ago that this had got discontinued. So I saw it in the airport and I was like, oh my God, I thought they discontinued that like a year ago. So I picked it up and it uh, turns out they never discontinued it. And I don't regret that at all because I really, really enjoyed this fragrance. Okay, so coming in at number 15 spot, this is where we start to get to like the superstars in my fragrance collection. These ones I love, these are like all to me. I would probably say a 10 out of 10 fragrances. Uh, the last 10 that I've shown you up to like um, Himalaya probably are like eight or nine out of 10. These top 15 are all, in my opinion, from my from my nose, all just 10 out of 10 fragrances. Every single one of them on this list are 10 out of 10. And number 15 spot, this one I need to get another bottle of before Anwaj decides to discontinue. Another uh, slightly strange fragrance, this one here. Imitation Man. Oh my god, let me just smell it because every time I smell it, it's like it blows me away. Yeah, oh, god. It's, it's no different. This thing, uh, I I enjoy wearing this probably the most, probably, maybe maybe the top three out of any fragrance in my collection. Every time I spray this and every time I wear it, I just absolutely love it. And every time I smell it on myself throughout the day, I, I'm so glad that I decided to chose that fragrance. Uh, I'm kind of running out on it coolest bottle design. Um, you can't really see it too much. Maybe I'm going to try and fix the colours in the in the editing, but at the bottom it starts off green and then it transitions up to like a yellow, then a pink, then a purple, and then to like a light blue at the top. You might not be able to see it on the video, but if you if you type it in, if you type in Anwaj imitation, you'll see what I'm on about. But oh man, this fragrance uh, it's got rose, it's got leather, it's got castorium in here. So this to me smells like uh, pear, brown sugar, and like a little bit of like a dampness. And I know that sounds really strange, but it is such a good fragrance in my opinion. It's supposed to smell like 1930s New York. And it just reminds me of like people listening to vinyl records in a basement in New York. And I can't say enough about this thing. It's so under the radar for Ramwage. But honestly guys, try and sample this if you can. Uh, I never thought I was going to like this thing. This is probably my most surprising uh, Amwash fragrance that I actually do like. So coming in at the 15 spot is Imitation Man. Coming in at the number 14 spot, this one was probably one of my favourite fragrances of all time for like two or three years. Whenever I first smelled this, it was like, oh my god, that is the best fragrance I've ever smelled. If I could only wear one fragrance the rest of my life, it would be this. And it's a shame really that Creed, this is uh, what this, this one is, you might know already if you've been following around the channel, but this one has just the performance wise and smell wise, it's not where it once was. Uh, probably because of uh, not being able to use like ambergris and they've had to like limit down the materials that they use. It's this one here, Millicene Imperial. Coolest bottle design. Uh, it, to me, it smells exactly what the bottle looks like. It just smells like liquid gold. Yeah, it's just like, uh, sea salty and watermelon. 
and it's got a really nice creamy dry down. Unfortunately, this batch that I've got isn't the same as like when they had it in the clear bottles. I'm not sure if that's just nostalgia, but uh, it smells a little bit different, but still it has got that millicene Imperial DNA. Nothing really smells like this. Maybe apart from Milestone, it's done a kind of good job of it, but nothing has the same like quality and, and smell quality that Millicene Imperial does. And every time I wear it, I know I smell good. Uh, and I feel like, you know, gold, just like what the bottle is. I know there's a lot of uh, stuff coming out at the minute about like Jay-Z, but I think that this was his signature scent. And I can kind of see that. I can see like, you know, like a billionaire living in like Miami or LA would wear this. Casual sort of like beach smell, uh, but it has also got a sophistication as well. It's like you're not trying, and but you already know that you're that you're, you're made out of gold, basically. This fragrance, whenever I wear it, it's just a little bit like uh, Liquid Luck from Harry Potter. And funny enough, it's at the number 14 spot, which is my lucky number. So yeah, every time I wear it, it just reminds me of Liquid Luck. And I just love wearing Millicene Imperial. Just a shame on the performance that it's not quite there. Coming in at the number 13 spot, this is a fairly new one on my list. This has been quite hyped up in Facebook groups. So I thought, okay, I'll buy a partial. It's my first one. It's my first fragrance from the house. Let's see what it's like. And uh, yeah, people definitely weren't lying when they, uh, when they hyped this thing up. I need to try a lot more from this fragrance house because I absolutely love it. Coming in at the 13 spot is Triumph of Bacchus, I think that's how you pronounce it, by Argos. <laughs> Funny story. Argos, or Argos, whatever, however you want to pronounce it. Argos in the UK is like um, a superstore, like a, a, a retail brand. <laughs> Uh, it's always funny to me like when, when people from America talk about Argo, Argos, I think they call it. Uh, they've got no idea that in the UK, Argos is a shop. So um, kind of funny that if you live in the UK, uh, Argos is a, is a shop's name. But the smell of this thing is, is something else, man. This is the Eau de Parfum. I know they've got an extract of Triumph of Bacchus. And either way, this thing is just great. If I were to make a fragrance, um, Every single note listing in Triumph of Bacchus is probably going to come up if I were to make my own fragrance. The notes in here are like identical to what I would want because like we talked about from Bright Peach, this thing has got a beautiful peach note in here. It smells like Perfumes de Mali Carlisle, say so that's like your baseline from like the vanilla and stuff in here. And then they just went crazy and uh, added a bunch of sweetness in it. That's what you get with this. It just smells delicious basically it's, it's the only way to describe it super fruity super sweet and it's very loud as well uh, but the quality of it i really enjoy it so coming in at the 13th spot is triumph of bacchus by argos and i was actually really surprised by argos um i need to to try out some more of their fragrances because that one really blew me away coming in at the 12th spot this one is one of the last designers on this list and this one for me uh, it gets debated between this and another one on this list that you'll see of the best Chanel fragrance of all time. The one that we're talking about at the number 12 spot is Bleu de Chanel Eau de Parfum. And I've just realized, can you see that? Yeah, you can kind of see the level remaining of this. Uh, I've actually never decanted this thing. This is from my own personal use. I don't feel like I've actually sprayed it that many times, but this is my girlfriend's favorite fragrance and um, maybe whenever she comes around my house, she actually sprays it on herself. Uh, you never know. Uh, but this thing has got, again, another really nice grapefruit note in here. Uh, it's very citrusy. It's very, uh, almost like it says, blue smelling. Uh, it's very classy. Uh, it's super versatile. So if I ever go away somewhere and I don't know uh, what the situation is going to be like, what the occasion is and stuff, and I just need a fragrance for everyday kind of wear, I'll wear this. Like, let's say me and my girlfriend go away somewhere. I'll bring this. Let's say for like one day, we're just walking around like a street area or something, like one of the markets. And then in the night, we go out for like a nice meal. This thing can suit both of those occasions very well. So super versatile, very nice. It gets great reactions, especially from the opposite sex. So coming in at the number 12 spot is Bleu de Chanel Eau de Parfum. In my opinion, the best version of additional okay so just missing out on the number 10 spot at the number 11 spot this one again similar to aventus clone is uh quite new on the list but it's very high up on the list and the reason why is because man it's a good fragrance in my opinion this is one of the best by creed 
uh, for the winter time. And it's, it's good. It's this one here. Royal Oud by Creed. And I'm just going to smell it real quick. Yeah, man. It smells very sophisticated. It reminds me a little bit, actually, just smelling it now, of Machino Toy Boy. But this is like, you know, the actual mature version of it and just done in a much better quality way. And it just reminds me of like winter time and just coziness. I think wearing something like this, this fleece would just work perfectly with Royal Oud. Quite spicy as well. I think that's where I'm getting the comparison to Toy Boy by Machino, uh, but really good. I get probably one of the best uh, longevities of any Creed with this thing. And I just really like it. It's a little bit more mature. Uh, I probably wouldn't say wear this if you're under, let's say, 22 or something. Obviously you could, but I just suggest there's other creeds out there for you compared to this one. Okay, kicking the list off in the number 10 spot. This one, uh, this is no slouch. This thing is powerful. It's strong. It's uh, very hit or miss in the fragrance community. Some people love it. Some people hate it. For me, I love it. Like I said, for me, I absolutely love it. It's in the top 10. Uh, after all. And I actually decant this fragrance and some people love it, some people hate it. And I can definitely see why. The notes in this thing, this is a very polarizing fragrance. If you like it, you love it. If you don't like it, you hate it. So the one that we're talking about, coolest bottle design, is Amouage Aubergine. So Aubergine smells like a fleshy grapefruit and it's just like doused with cognac. It just reminds me of like being like a like a, a bar or something and you just spilt a bunch of cognac on yourself and you've got like a bunch of like fleshy cocktail uh, like fruits and stuff just splashed out onto the bar. That is what this sort of reminds me of. The reason why some people don't like this though is it's got the main note of cumin in here which again like we said with Fate Man is associated with like sweatiness or cooking and it's also got an animalic note in here. So this thing can remind some people of like, you know, sort of barnyard smell. And I kind of get it, but you have to remember, like, no one's going to be smelling your fragrance like this. They're going to be smelling it from at least this far, like from like arm's length. And in the air, this thing is a beautiful smell. Whenever you're wearing this in like a cold night or something, and whenever this cuts through the air, it's so, so good. It's also one of the, it's probably one of the longest lasting fragrances that I own. And even smell this like a week later on clothes and stuff like that. It's a very, very strong fragrance, but really good as well. So coming in at the number 10 spot, Overture Man by Amouage. Definitely sample this before you go out and buy a full bottle. Coming in at the number nine spot, this one is probably the new hype beast. I know we talked about Aventus Cologne being a hype beast. This thing is on par with that. The House of Creed is known for being one of the best, especially Aventus. And this thing, in my opinion, goes head to head with it in terms of compliments and just in terms of like the way, how the fragrance is set out and, and what it's set out to achieve. To smell fresh, to smell professional, whilst also being like compliment pulling and, and like sort of magnetizing. And the fragrance we are talking about is Louis Vuitton Imagination. This thing is an absolute beast of a fresh fragrance. It's nothing groundbreaking because it is just like a fresh fragrance, but the way that they do it and the tea note in here, as well as the citron, is actually, the way they've done it is unique, but the DNA is not unique. It's just a fresh and clean smell. But the tea and the citron in here are different enough where whenever you smell this, well, especially for me, I smelled it and I was like, oh, wow, that is probably the best fresh fragrance I've ever smelled. And the performance on it is incredible. Um, I've had people tell me they can smell me from at least like 20 to 30 feet away and work. And it just sticks around forever. I think there's an unboxing note in here, which is probably the reason behind that. But in terms of compliments, if I ever want to go out and get a compliment and I'm meeting someone new, I'll just wear this because I know no matter what, they're not going to dislike it. And the chances are they're definitely going to smell me and they might actually give me a compliment because it's such a easy compliment. Like you can just say to someone, oh, you smell nice. Whereas like something like Overture Man, if you get a compliment on it, it's like, okay, you smell, you know, different. <laughs> Whereas this, they'll just say it smells nice. And, and how can you go wrong with that, right? So coming in at the number nine spot is Louis Vuitton's Imagination. Coming in at the number eight spot, this one is just so good. I'm always going to have this in my collection. We talked about one of the, uh, well, the clones of this fragrance earlier. 
And I had the clone for like four years. And even though the clone smells similar, nothing smells as good as the real thing. And the one that we're talking about is this thing here, Creed's Green Irish Tweed. In my opinion, every single fragrance head should have this in their collection. It's so timeless, it's so classy. <sighs> no one, I don't think, can dislike this thing. It's been around since the 80s, and there's a reason why. And it's quite well known, obviously, with cool water, but this thing just takes it up a different level. I love wearing this. I always feel like, you know, old money kind of smell whenever I wear this. So coming in at the number eight spot is Creed's Green Irish Tweed. Cool bottle design as well. I feel like, because it's black, because it's stealthed out, if you go to like the Creed Boutique and you're going through all the different Creed fragrances, this thing's in the background. And most people uh, tend to not, not pick it up. But for the ones that do know, this thing is incredible. So coming in at the eight spot is Green Irish Tweed by Creed. Coming in at the number seven spot. This one, we've talked about another version of this fragrance again uh, earlier on the list. Uh, but I wanted to include this one way higher than this one because it's just such an improvement to the to that one. What the one that we're talking about, by the way, is Amwage Reflection 45. First of all, we're just gonna say something about the bottle. How it's art. This bottle is artwork, man. Uh, it's the exceptional extrait, so it's got this little like collar thing on it. But oh man, this thing is such an this is to me. Um, what Anwar should have brought out for Reflection Man in the first place. This is, to me, more anwar than uh, the original Reflection Man. If you've got Reflection Man already and you're wondering, oh, should I get this? Then no, you don't, you don't need to own both. If you don't have any Reflection Man and uh, you've got quite a bit of money to spend because this thing isn't cheap, this thing cost me like £240, I think, Probably one of the most expensive fragrances that I own, but there is a reason for it. The quality of it, it's an X straight de parfum. So it's got 45% uh, perfume concentration in here. And with that, you get a little bit more depth. Unfortunately though, you get a little bit less in terms of projection. Longevity is definitely there. It's quite oily. Like you can actually, when you spray it on your hand, you get like an oil sheen, a little bit like the bottle design actually on your hand, and I've had great reactions with this. This was, when I recorded the Anwash Ranked video, my second favorite. There's actually one that's overtaken it, um, which you'll see very shortly, but this one, still, it's one of the best. If I could only have one fragrance for the rest of my life, this one always comes to mind. So coming in at the seven spot, lucky seven, is Anwash Reflection 45. Coming in at the number six spot, this one, I battled it out really hard with number five on where I'm going to put each one. And ultimately it came down to me remembering how I rank these fragrances. Uh, the main one I wanted to include was how much I enjoy wearing them. In terms of actual smell, I think I prefer this one to the number five spot. But in terms of wearing it and the way how the fragrance develops on skin, I actually prefer the number five spot. But the one that we're talking about in number six is still an amazing fragrance. It's one of my favorite from the House of Creed. Probably, actually, it probably is my favorite fragrance. If we're going off the smell, uh, it's this one here, Creed's Arolfa. Oh man, so fresh, so clean. Fresh, clean, citrusy sea breeze. It just reminds me of being like on a yacht or something in the Mediterranean. Performance on this thing is actually surprisingly good. Uh, most people say that it doesn't smell that nice, but for me, I absolutely love this. It doesn't smell like anything that I've ever smelled before, really. I mean, the th I think the closest thing I can relate this to is Millicene Imperial. And even Millicene Imperial is a unique scent. So Creed de Rolfa is just so good, so fresh. It's a really safe fragrance. Just like I said, the number five spot, even though I prefer the smell of this and the DNA of this, the number five spot develops better on my skin compared to this. This thing, the dry down of it isn't its best quality. The best thing about this thing is like the open in 30 minutes. After that, it does kind of sort of fade away the citruses which is what the best part of this fragrance is the opening the citruses sort of fizzle out uh, but you're still left with a really nice ambergris smell a really nice freshness and on clothes this thing keeps your clothes smelling amazing for a very long time so coming in at the number six spot is creed's Arolfa. coming in at the number five spot this is my favorite creed fragrance to wear um i think i heard somewhere that they're going to discontinue it I hope they're not discontinuing this version of it because 
It is so good. And it's this one here. <laughs> this got a lot of hate in the community when it first came out, Creed Viking. But it just smells a little bit like Old Spice, but in a much better way. Oh my God, yeah, it is, man. I'm surprised this thing got hate because even I hated it actually back in the day. But oh my God, I gave, I've given this thing a lot of wears and the way how this fragrance just develops on your skin is just absolute magic. The opening of it is so fresh, so good. The heart notes, whenever it goes to like, you know, the halfway point of this fragrance is amazing. And the dry down of this fragrance is one of my favorite dry downs of any fragrance. It is so, so nice to smell. I think they might be discontinuing the Viking Cologne version. That one I've only tried a few times and it just doesn't have the same depth that this thing has. The reason why I think it got so much hate in the community was because this was like the kind of main release after Aventus and they marketed it as uh, the predecessor of Aventus. And in a way, I kind of understand what they mean. And I think what it was, was because obviously, like I said, this smells a little bit like Old Spice. It's a, it's a very manly smell. Aventus is also a very manly smell. But with Aventus, you've got the freshness in there as well from like the apple. And I think with this, they went for the peppery notes in here, but also they've got rose and stuff in there too. So they've got the manliness and they've also got like a freshness in here too. And the, the spearmint I think they have in here is great. It really separates its fragrance from Old Spice and just makes it its own separate thing. But I kind of see what they meant with making this manly as well, the same way that Ventus is manly. So coming in at the number five spot is Creed's Viking. Very tempted to get a second bottle of this thing. Coming in at the number four spot, this one, funny enough, actually, uh, I've decided to put it as close to Viking as possible because Viking is a kind of like older sort of fragrance. I think whenever I spray this, sometimes like someone could be like, oh, he's wearing Old Spice. He's just gone into his like, his dad's uh, fragrance cupboard or something. And the number four spot is uh, actually quite a similar vibe to that where it's like, you know, you've just picked this up from like the dresser or something from a fragrance that isn't yours. And it's this one here. Again, it's been around for a very, very, very long time. I think the eighties, I think this came out. Chanel Antaeus. Now, Chanel Antaeus, this is a very recent pickup of mine. Not for any particular reason. I've wanted this for a very long time. I've just never really had the opportunity to get it. This is, I think, a newer, newer formulation. It's got the black, got the black cap. The older ones, if you can find the older ones, oh man, they're even better. They've got the silver cap. That's back when they actually could have castorium in here. So castorium is the main note of Antaeus. So I'm going to have to do a separate review because this thing is so much depth to it. But the castorium in here give it like a really musky, sweaty smell. But they've also got the really nice fresh powderiness in here from, I think there's a pine note in here. I think that's what it is. And uh, most people find this very polarizing. They don't like it. But myself and many, many others in the fragrance community absolutely love this thing. I think it's my favorite designer fragrance of all time. So coming in at the number four spot, in my opinion, the best Chanel, followed by uh, Bleu de Chanel, and then Chanel Edition Blanche. Number four spot is this one here, Chanel Antaeus. Give this thing a go. <sighs> yeah, it's good. And just the whole way through this fragrance, the same with Viking, I just love wearing this thing. Coming in at the number three spot, this one has actually overtaken Reflection 45 for my second favorite Amwash fragrance. This thing, again, is discontinued. Amwash, why did you discontinue this thing? It's an absolute masterpiece. I can kind of see it being quite polarizing actually thinking about it because of how strong this fragrance is. It's very sweet, it's very strong. And it's this one here. Really cool bottle design. When the, uh, when the light hits it perfectly and you get the gold coming off, look at that, uh, is Amwash Sunshine Man. And I was looking for this fragrance for the longest time. I say of any fragrance, maybe apart from Myths Man, I was scouring the internet for this thing and I'm so glad I got a bottle of it because, oh my God, this thing has got Immortelle, it's got orange brandy, it's got lavender, and it's just such a soothing fragrance. It smells like a little bit like a Halloween sweet. Um, I, I know in the UK they definitely had them. There was like these three little like hard candy balls and they would be in this uh, in this little 
pack. That is what this smells like to me. And it's perfect for the autumn time. Sunshine Man, you would think it's a very summery, fresh fragrance. No, this is very sweet. It's, um, I wouldn't say it's dark. It's just sweet. It's, it's like a yellowy sweetness. And to me, this is like a ray of sunshine. Uh, it's like the hot ray of sunshine that you get on like an autumn day. That is how I describe this fragrance. And it's so, so good. If you can ever, ever find a bottle of this, give it a go because the orange brandy or, or the lavender or the immortel that they put in this, give it a really nice dry sweetness. And it's so, so strong. One spray of this on your hand, you can smell it all day long. So coming in at the number three spot is Amouage Sunshine Man. So upset they discontinued this thing. Okay, coming in at the number two spot, guys. This one I've talked about on the channel before. Uh, if you've watched the last video, I'm going to spoil it for you. This was actually my number two last time and nothing's changed. I still absolutely love this fragrance. I've actually, <laughs> since filming that video, I've actually got an extra two bottles of this thing. So I've got three bottles in total. The one that we're talking about is from Zerjoff. And it's this one here, Naxos. So Naxos is honey, lavender, lemon. I think it's got tobacco in here too. It's just such a good warm fragrance that you can wear anytime. So classy as well, actually thinking about it. This fragrance, uh, it reminds me a little bit of if you go into like an arts and crafts shop and you go like round the back and you've got like all these like uh, candles and stuff like that and all these like kind of incense candles. That is a little bit what this reminds me of. It is literally like liquid gold, in my opinion. I absolutely love this thing. There's a reason why I got three bottles. It is very hyped up in the community. Some people, some people don't like it, but for me, I absolutely love this thing. I get along with this thing great. So coming in at the number two spot is Zerjoff Naxos. And guys, just before we get on with the number one spot, remember, as always, if you've enjoyed this video up to this point and you've actually made it this far, don't forget to drop a like. Don't forget to subscribe if you guys haven't already and you're a fan of fragrances. And with that said, number one spot, this one had to be here. It's my favorite fragrance of all time. Like I said with, where is it? With Millicium Imperial, I wear it as like a kind of liquid look, Harry Potter style. Number one spot is like the definitive of that. Every time I spray it, and I hardly do spray it, but when I do, I feel like a billionaire, man. I feel like nothing can stop me that day. And even the smell of it is like the smell of a billionaire. And it's again from the house of Amouage. This thing, I don't think I'm ever gonna smell something better than this. And it's Amouage Jubilation 25. Oh my God, yeah. I, I'm never gonna smell something better than this, man. This thing is like a one million out of a one million fragrance. I absolutely love this thing. It's got honey, it's got blackberry. The blackberry note in here is just incredible. It's got olibanum and it's just got so much spices and there's so, so many notes in this thing. Go on to Fragrantica, there's like 25 notes listed for this one fragrance. And it was to celebrate the 25th anniversary of Amouage. Oh, man. And it just smells like royalty, man. It just smells like uh, Omani royalty in a bottle. And the slogan behind Amouage is Gift of Kings, because if you didn't know, it was commissioned by the Sultan of Oman. I can see him wearing this or any kind of chic billionaire wearing this. Every time I spray it on myself, I'll usually spray it for like my birthday or like a really special event like uh, New Year's or like my, my anniversary and stuff like that. And oh man, it is one of my favorite fragrances ever. If I could get rid of every fragrance, I am going to be keeping this or Reflection 45 because this thing, you can wear it anytime, to be honest. But it's just so, it's so posh, you, you might not want to. Uh, oh man, so good. This is actually gold in a bottle. So coming in at the number one spot, I love this thing, man. Jubilation 25 by Amouage. Okay, guys, so that is going to do it for this list. Um, I think we've covered every single fragrance. Ages ago, we talked about Armoff Craze, and we just recently finished talking about Jubilation 25. Thank you guys so much for sticking around to this point on the video. Like I said, if you guys want to learn how I grew this massive fragrance collection in the space of a year, I have got a decanting course in the link in the description below. And also an absolute massive thank you to you guys as well for supporting the channel. I'm really loving the community that we've got going. Uh, it's been great. The support's been great. I really enjoy making these videos. Uh, it's something I'm really passionate about, which you can probably tell because I've just filmed for, uh, without editing this video, an hour and a half just talking about <laughs> liquid in a bottle. Um, <laughs> and yeah, it's just really encouraging to see you guys actually enjoy uh, me 
just waffling on for, for absolutely ages about fragrances. Like I said, I'm not one for the numbers and stuff like that, but I really wanted to give back to you guys just to say thank you for the 2,000 subscribers, for all the support recently. You guys are great. Um, with that said, uh, I'll see you all in the next video, which is probably going to be a lot uh, shorter than this one. I'm going to probably do like a 10 minute video, I think, just to just to chill out. I'm going to have to put all these fragrances back now too. So uh, thank you guys all for watching and I'll see you all in the next one. Goodbye.